Cal, and welcome to my world. I love platformers. 2D or 3D, I love them. I've already reviewed three 2D platformers here on Big Cal's World. Link to them all on the screen now. But I feel it's time for me to do what pretty much every game franchise did in the mid 90s and go 3D. So, this month's game review is Gex 3D, Enter the Gecko on the Sony PlayStation 1. Gex 3D, Enter the Gecko is a sequel to Gex, a 2D platformer originally meant to be a Panasonic 3DO exclusive, but quickly became available on the PS1 and PC for fairly obvious reasons. The story of that game saw Gex, our gecko protagonist, addicted to TV. One day while he's watching, he gets sucked into the TV and into the media dimension, and in order to escape and prevent the evil rest from taking over TV as he knows it, he has to go through different levels based on TV genres and film genres, collect remotes and then finally battle Res in the end. Well, I suppose it's better than a kidnapped princess, right? Anyway, that brings us to Gex 3D Enter the Gecko. Gex 3D Enter the Gecko was released in 1998 on a variety of platforms, N64, Game Boy Color, PC and the version I'm looking at today, the PS1. The story this time around sees Gex once again being addicted to TV until he's kidnapped by secret agents and paid lots of money to go back into the media dimension to defeat Rez who has returned. Guess they just had to include someone getting kidnapped this time, though it's still not a princess. As I alluded to in the opening, game franchises during this time were all jumping aboard the 3D train, and Gex was no different. Levels are large open areas, usually divided up into sections or rooms. There is a hub world for the media dimension, but it looks like they put almost no effort into it. Honestly, might as well not even be here. It's large and open, but it's empty, lacking colour or any kind of imagination. It's just not good. The only parts of the hub world I enjoy are the giant TVs used to access levels, similar to Super Mario 64 where you access levels through the paintings. Thankfully, the effort all seems to have gone into the levels, which are all based, once again, on different genres of TV and film, and they are all so wonderfully detailed. The levels can go from cartoons to sci-fi to horror to kung fu and even prehistory. And to help with the visual appeal, Gex will wear a different costume in each level depending on the theme. Just one of those cool little things I like to see in games. Most of the genres repeat at least once and usually use the same visual style, but they have totally different layouts and of course objectives. The objectives in each game revolve around you collecting a red remote in the Mario 64 style. Sometimes you might just have to reach a particular area, other times you'll need to defeat particular enemies, etc, etc. Most are fairly simple, but there are a couple that require some basic puzzle solving. Also within each level is a hidden silver remote, and these bad boys can be really tricky to find without a guide. Another silver remote is up for grabs too, requiring you to collect a set number of collectibles. Mario has gold coins, Sonic has gold rings, Yoshi has gems, and Gex has a whole bunch of shit. Each genre features three different collectibles within their levels. Once you collect 30 of the first one, the collectibles will change into something else. Collect 40, and then they change again. Collect another 50, and you'll be rewarded with that second silver remote. Now, this sounds boring and repetitive on paper, but don't worry, these collectibles are scattered around the levels, typically along the path you'll be taking to complete the red remote objectives. What I really like about the collectibles, though, is the different types. In the horror levels, for example, you'll start off collecting skulls, then they'll turn into tombstones, and finally become Jason masks. So while you have to collect 130 in total, it at least changes it up a couple of times to keep you interested, and once again these are not difficult to find. Collecting these silver remotes, while not necessarily needed to complete the game unless you're going for a 100% completion, do add bonus stages to the game. 
These levels are simple enough, putting you into a particular location and having you collect a certain number of items in the given time. Do this and you unlock a gold remote, and in turn, those gold remotes unlock hidden levels, which give you access to new red remotes to help you either complete the game 100% or just progress through the game in general. It's always nice to have different options in case you get stuck on a red remote in a certain level and need access to more red remotes. Once a certain number of red remotes have been collected, you'll unlock a boss fight. And these are all pretty much simple and very easy, um, but still fun. I, I still enjoy them, especially the um, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla ripoff, where it sees a giant Mecha Gex against you, a giant Gex, in a city where you get to destroy buildings and beat the hell out of a robot version of you. The final boss, which is of course Rez, is a little different because he has stages to the battle and can be quite tough, as well as terrifying. <laughs> Controlling Gex in a 3D plane is simple enough. Move around with the D-pad or analog stick, though being honest when it comes to some of these early 3D games on the PS1, analog stick support isn't the greatest, so I tend to stick to the D-pad. You then have X to jump, square to spin attack with your tail, and circle to use your tongue to collect fly power-ups which can range from an extra life, more health, or even fire and ice power-ups, which sadly are utterly pointless. You can also bounce on your tail, similar to the pogo stick bouncing duck tails, and to execute this you first need to press jump, then when you're in the air, press and hold the jump button again to bounce. However, you cannot simply hold in the button to keep bouncing, instead you'll have to let go mid-bounce, then press and hold it in again. Another way to reach areas a little easier is to do the Karate Jump Kick, which acts as a long jump as well as an attack. While running, hold either L2 or R2, then jump to gain extra distance. Sadly, as with most 3D platformers, the camera can be a real bitch here. There are three settings, automatic, semi-automatic and manual, and I'm pretty sure you can work out what they do. Unfortunately, There'll be certain locations where it just doesn't matter what setting you have the camera on, it will fuck you up. It will move around as you're moving and confuse you so you're not sure which way you're going, which direction you're originally going in. You'll be trying to make one of those precise jumps and BAM! Camera will just disappear over here and you won't have a fucking clue where you're going. Uh, definitely a real pain in the ass. And honestly... I knew this was a problem already going into the game. I've been playing it for years. I mean, I got it when it first came out. And I never remember the camera being as bad as it is when I played it on this playthrough. So unfortunately, it does bring the game down a little for me. Although I still love it. I do love you, Gex. I do love you. I do love you, even if your camera is terrible. Mm -hmm. Terrible camera. Gex is also capable of sticking to certain walls which can place you upside down or at weird angles, and here is another instance where the camera is likely to make your eyes bleed as it keeps changing around when you move, making you wonder which way you are actually going. A huge part of Gex 3D, and all of the Gex games, is that Gex talks. Well, it has one-liners. Over 300 in this game, which is more than the first one. I forgot to look up how many were in the first one. But anyway, uh, they're usually references to pop culture from the time, along with some other just random funny lines. And, you know, originally some made me crack up a little bit. But, thankfully, they're not too tedious. Even though we do hear some of them over and over again, I don't get too bored with them. Despite the fact that most of them, like I said, are random and don't really correlate with what's happening in the game. I think the big reason that I'm not bored with them is the voice actor. So, in the first game, we had Dana Gould, who's a comedy writer, he's worked on The Simpsons and some other things like that. He wrote, I believe, the lines and did the voiceover. And, oh, his voice is terrible. It's awful. It's not funny, it sounds bad, it just does not go well with Gex. 
Gets 3D, Enter the Gecko, the US version, Dana Gould, still doing the voice. UK and Europe, we got someone else. We got a man called Leslie Phillips, who is an English actor, he's been in tons of things over the years. Um, some newer people might recognise him, he was in, I believe, a couple of the Harry Potter films. No idea who he was in it, but he was there. And basically, he's like, kind of how you would expect James Bond to be in real life. You know, the suit, and the accent, and the smooth way he talks. And it just fits so perfectly with Gex, especially in this game. And I honestly believe that the reason that I like this game as much as I do is because I don't want to shoot myself whenever Gex opens his mouth, because we have the far superior voice actor for this version. It's just a shame they didn't keep him for the uh, sequel after Gex 3D, but at least we did get him here and we weren't stuck with the same Dana Gould for all three games like the Americans. I'm sorry about that, I, I don't know how you manage. So while Gex does have its flaws from repeated lines, the lines that don't make any sense, and in numerous places terrible camera angles, it does have plenty to love. Um, some of the um, lines are quite amusing and like I said I'm not too bored by them because we in Europe and UK have got the superior voice actor. I, I love the levels, you know the cartoon levels are some of my favourite based on Looney Tunes are so colourful and bright, it's got all the different costumes on sometimes you know it might be in a bunny suit or whatever, it's rabbit season and there's Elmer Fudd lookalikes chasing him with guns. Uh, you've got the horror ones, which are, are hilarious sometimes. Just You'll be walking along, you'll hear random screams, and there's weird ghosts running about, you know, like chucky dolls. You're not there, you'll kick them and knock the head off and stuff like that. Um, the sci-fi levels can be a little bit frustrating sometimes. You need the oxygen to refill every so often, and sometimes you'll go down a path thinking there's something at the end, and there's nothing, it's a dead end. You have to go all the way back and hope to God you've got enough oxygen. Um, but overall, even the frustrating levels, the levels that don't make too much sense, like the sci-fi ones and the cyber levels, those can be pretty bad as well. I still love this game. I can play it any time. In fact, I usually play it a couple of times a year. But what I'll do is I'll put it in, I'll think, okay, I'll just want to play it for a little while, and then you know, I'll probably not play it for a while. And what I ended up doing is basically collecting all the remotes available up to the first boss. So that's six red remotes, four silver remotes, and then two gold remotes. One coming from the bonus stage and one from the boss. And I'll do that every time on a single playthrough. I'll just get up to that point, so I'm having fun, and I just want to keep going. Then once I unlock the, the next area, I'll think, okay, I'll save and come back to it. More often than not, I do go back to it, but, you know, maybe a level or two at a time. But the fact that I can still come to it year after year and go through those same levels in a single playthrough, no problems, and still love it, really speaks volumes to how much fun the game is, despite its flaws. Now, there is a sequel for this called um, Gex Deep Cover Gecko, and um, a lot of people think that it's better. Me, I just never got into it that much. The levels are bigger, more open, there's some different themes going, but I don't know why I just never got into it, so I always reverted back to Gex 3D, which probably again helps me realise why I like it so much, because the, the next game in the series was such a disappointment to me. So that is Gex 3D Enter the Gecko on the PlayStation 1. Still a firm favourite of mine on the system, though the camera angles do really bring it down. And the fact that the game is kind of simple, it's not that difficult. Um, you know, the fact that I can do so much in a single playthrough in not that much time, you know, proves that it isn't too hard. But it's still fun at least. The score that I am going to give it is... 80 out of 100. Still a great game, does suffer from simplicity and bad camera angles and with the controls you're better off using a D-pad rather than an analog stick. So you've got to keep that in mind. Well, that's all from this week. That's all from me this week, sorry. 
I've been Cal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.